Hello everybody, and welcome back to Game Critiques. Nintendo has a lot of iconic franchises, but with most of them spanning decades, their games can't all be great. So today, I'll be going through Nintendo's 20 biggest franchises in terms of sales, and talking about the worst those franchises have to offer. I do plan on leaving out the CDI games, as they're not really Nintendo games, and I also plan on leaving out download-only titles, so my choices aren't too obvious with some series like Zelda and Wario. But I will be counting other spin-offs. Let's get started with Nintendo's biggest franchise, Mario. Choosing Mario's worst game is pretty tough. It's definitely either Mario's Time Machine or Mario is Missing. Both of these educational games are awful as games and education tools in pretty much every way. I haven't played too much of either, but the little bit of Mario's Time Machine I played was just a little worse. It was just a little more ugly, a little more tedious, a little more mind-numbing overall. So, Mario's worst game is... Mario's Time Machine. Now, on to Pokemon. Pokemon has a lot of mediocre and bad spin-offs, but the three that stand out most to me are Hey You Pikachu, Pokemon Dash, and Pokemon Channel. Now, the other two are pretty bad, but Hey You Pikachu is definitely the worst. It just doesn't work. Its gimmick doesn't work. Even if it did, the game would be boring and repetitive, but Pikachu barely responds to what you say in any meaningful way. This game is a frustrating waste of time. So Pokemon's worst game is... Hey You Pikachu. Now, onto the Wii series. The worst Wii series game is definitely Wii Music. The Wii series varies in quality a lot, with some great games like Wii Sports Resort, and many mediocre games like Wii Play. But the only one that I'd call bad is Wii Music. I think this clip from E3 2008 tells you everything you need to know about how engaging the gameplay is and how well the motion controls work. So, the Wii series' worst game is... Wii Music. Now, on to The Legend of Zelda. The Legend of Zelda doesn't really have any bad games. There are some that stand out as worse than others, like Zelda 2 and Phantom Hourglass, but those games are still good. The least good of the Zelda games, though, in my opinion, would have to be Triforce Heroes. This game isn't bad, but its gimmick is stolen from Four Swords and it pulls off the gimmick significantly worse. I don't like how it's structured, it feels less like an adventure game and more like a multiplayer time killer, and none of the puzzles are particularly interesting. It's not impressive or immersive. So, the worst Zelda game is... The Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes. Now, on to Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong had a stretch of time in the 2000s where it pretty much only got weird spin-offs. Some of them were surprisingly good, like Donkey Kong Jungle Climber. Some of them were mediocre, like Donkey Konga. But one of them was just bad. Donkey Kong Barrel Blast controls poorly, looks ugly, and just flat out isn't fun to play. This racing game is closer to Garfield Kart than Mario Kart. So, the worst Donkey Kong game is... Donkey Kong Barrel Blast. Now, on to Animal Crossing. I've been disappointed with Animal Crossing games like New Horizons and, to an extent, City Folk in the past. However, I wouldn't call any mainline Animal Crossing game bad. New Horizons is mediocre, but it's not bad. There is one Animal Crossing game that is truly horrible, though. The only Animal Crossing game released for Wii U was a party game called Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. It's basically Mario Party, except it has no minigames, it's even more luck-based, and you have to touch an Amiibo figure to the gamepad every time it's your turn to move. Amiibo Festival is one of the worst games I've ever played, not just from Animal Crossing and not even just from Nintendo. So, the worst Animal Crossing game is definitely Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. Now, on to Super Smash Bros. Every Smash game is good, and they've largely improved as time goes on, at least for the casual crowd. From a casual perspective, Ultimate may just be the best fighting game ever. And from a competitive perspective, Melee may just be the best game ever. So I guess the worst one would have to be the original. It plays fine, but doesn't have the crazy roster and modes of future titles. It's a good game, but it was greatly improved upon with its sequels. So, the worst Super Smash Bros. game is... Super Smash Bros. Now, on to Game & Watch. Most Game & Watch games are very simple fun. It's honestly kind of hard for me to rank one above the other. However, 
The worst one is definitely Fire Attack. It's not totally unfun to play, but it features some questionable designs. So, the worst Game & Watch game is Game & Watch Fire Attack. Now, on to Kirby. Kirby doesn't really have any games that are bad. Most of its mainline games are great, and most of the spin-offs are good too. The only retail game I've played from the Kirby series that I felt was mediocre was Star Allies. It was still alright, but it was lacking in content, charm, and variety. So I guess Kirby's worst game is Kirby Star Allies. Now, on to Brain Age. I don't have a lot of experience with the Brain Age series, so my ranking here admittedly won't be totally fair. From what I've heard, the Switch game, which was never released in my country, is pretty bad. Apparently it lacks content and some of its gimmicks with the Joy-Cons don't work very well. So I think that the worst Brain Age game is Dr. Kawashima's Brain Training for Nintendo Switch. But that is based on what I've seen, not what I've played. Now, on to Nintendogs. Nintendogs is another series I don't have a lot of experience with, but I have played it before. I didn't dig super deep into either title, but it seemed to me like Nintendogs plus Cats kept all the good stuff from the original and added more good stuff to it. So, I guess the worst Nintendogs game would be the original Nintendogs. It's not bad, but its sequel was a straight up improvement. Now, on to Duck Hunt. There's only one Duck Hunt game, so the worst Duck Hunt game is Duck Hunt. That was easy. Now, on to Yoshi. Yoshi games are super hit or miss. Some are incredible platformers, while others are embarrassing messes. I'd say the three that stand out to me as not good are Yoshi's Story, Yoshi's New Island, and Yoshi's Crafted World. Of those three, I definitely think Crafted World is the worst. The movement feels sluggish and awful, the level design is boring and repetitive, the music is absolutely terrible, I legitimately had to turn it off after it gave me headaches, and even the visual style is poorly executed. Yoshi looks weird, the texture looks bad and doesn't fit the world at all, and the resolution is pretty low, especially in handheld mode. Everything looks blurry. So, the worst Yoshi game is Yoshi's Crafted World. It really doesn't do anything right. Now, on to Wario. Wario games have a lot of variety, but they're consistently pretty great. I'd say there's only one retail Wario game that isn't good. Game & Wario is aggressively mediocre. It seems to miss the point of WarioWare in a really odd way. Most of the minigames aren't fun to control and are overly long. They focus far too much on showing off what the Wii U gamepad can do and not on being fun. It's basically a much worse version of Nintendo Land. So, the worst Wario game is Game & Wario. Now, on to Luigi's Mansion. The first Luigi's Mansion is by far the best in my opinion. It's legitimately atmospheric and the puzzles are all great. The second is a lot worse, it has worse puzzles and a far worse structure, but it's still a solid game. And the third is just like the second, with better visuals, puzzles, and structure. That makes it pretty easy to choose the worst one. So, the worst Luigi's Mansion game is Luigi's Mansion 2, also known as Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. Now, on to Metroid. I was worried I'd have to say something here that would get me a lot of dislikes when I started planning this video. Then I remembered that Federation Force exists. Federation Force is boring, repetitive, and ugly. It fails tremendously at being a Metroid game, it's very much not atmospheric or exploration focused. But, it also fails at being a fun multiplayer shooter. So, the worst Metroid game is Metroid Prime Federation Force. Now, on to Splatoon. Splatoon 2 has most of the content of the original Splatoon, plus more maps, weapons, and modes, and a better single player, especially with the Octo Expansion DLC. Sure, it controls a little worse, I do miss the Wii U gamepad's implementation, but it's really hard to argue that Splatoon 2 isn't better than the first. So, the worst Splatoon game is the original Splatoon. Now, on to Fire Emblem. I feel like the first Fire Emblem on Famicom is pretty obviously the worst. It's tremendously held back by its hardware. Fates may have a bad story, and Echoes may have bad map design, but the advancements in hardware still let them both be better games overall. The first Fire Emblem just isn't fleshed out enough to be particularly satisfying as a strategy game or an RPG. So, the worst Fire Emblem game is Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light. Now, on to Star Fox. Star Fox has a lot of weird games, but there are really only two that I feel could be called the worst. The original Star Fox is a little too simple, almost definitely as a result of the hardware it's on, and Star Fox Zero is kind of a mess. But, I have to admit, once you get used to Star Fox Zero's controls, if you ever do, it's actually pretty fun. Now this takes a long time. It's pretty likely that this may never happen to you if you try to play it. 
but thankfully I was able to grasp him after a playthrough. And when I did, I started to really enjoy it. So, the worst Star Fox game is Star Fox on the Super Nintendo. Now, last but not least, onto the Tomodachi series. The worst Tomodachi game, at least of the ones that were released outside of Japan, is easily Metopia. It's the least charming and the most repetitive. All of its new RPG elements are shallow and poorly executed, and they hold back the quirky life sim elements. It's like Tomodachi life without the fun and with hours of boring grinding and a bad RPG thrown in for good measure. So, the worst Tomodachi game is... Metopia. Well, those are Nintendo's 20 biggest series. These are the worst of the best. Do you agree with my selections? Let me know in the comments below. If you liked this video, I'd really appreciate it if you liked, commented, hit the notification bell, and or subscribed. I'd also recommend you check out some of my other content, like my ranking of the 2D Metroid games. Thank you all for watching. Have a great rest of your day.